Okay, welcome to Behind the Lyrics. In these videos, I'm going to be going through the songs of various albums and talking about what each song is actually about, lyrically. Um, everything that I talk about is from a quote from one of the band members, so it's not just a random person's opinion, this is what the band thinks about their own songs. So let's start. The first song is It's On. So, Korn, uh, JD from Korn says that, th that this is the peer pressure anthem. He says that it's about him being so stressed, going out partying, and everyone's just like, um, come on, it's on. Uh, and basically, I'm going to paraphrase the quotes. Um, it's, it's, so yeah, it's, it's, it's the partying, it's the alcohol, and the woman, everything wrapped up into one. And in the chorus, he talks about why, why am I really doing this? Is, is it my fault? Um, all the booze and the women do is just make it worse. They just rearrange all the problems in a different order so I can deal with them one moment at a time. So that's it on peer pressure. Uh, song number two, Freak on a Leash. So Brian uh, said that the song title was sort of like, like a kinky dominatrix thing, but JD insists that that's not the case. The meaning is the concept of JD being um, kind of like a dog being walked on a leash by the music industry and how they're making all of the money all the profits and then JD is just there being kind of like pimped out that's generally what he said but to actually quote him word for word he said one of the best titles I've ever had for a song that's my song against the music industry like I'm feeling like I'm fucking a pimp a prostitute like I'm being paraded around I'm this freak paraded around but I've got corporate America fucking making all the money while it's taking a part of me it's like they stole something from me they stole my innocence, and I'm not calm anymore. I worry constantly. I think that's basically it for that song. Yeah, so corporate uh, America uh, taking away any sense of, of fun. Uh, JD being the freak on the leash, whilst the music industry is taking something from him. Makes sense. Next. Track 3, Got the Life. So JD basically says it's a song bagging on himself about how he's got everything handed to him. Um, but he looks up to God and basically says, I don't want this anymore. Or does he? He's not sure. Um, he's asking the question of, of, does he really want all of this fame? And then he also says, uh, quote unquote, I truly know, really, the meanings of the songs. Almost. That's what I'm getting out of it right now. Uh, and then... Brian said about the um, song itself, he says, uh, and I remember when Got The Life happened, David Silvera did that disco beat. All of us looked at each other. It's a haunting melody and guitar line, but the drums were a little happier than metal. So we were all like, is this good or is this kind of cheesy? Because this is kind of like a disco beat. Sweet. Next song. Dead Bodies Everywhere. Okay. So apparently JD's dad wanted him to not be in the music industry. Yeah, since he exper experienced it himself, he wanted John to become something else, something I can never be, uh, like in the lyrics. Next we have Children of the Corn, uh, that's the one featuring Ice Cube, so JD says that's the song that Ice Cube is on. Ice Cube came up with the title and basically started talking about puberty and growing up. But the song in general, uh, JD says it's about pa um, parents of corn fans, which are known as Children of the Corn. He says that parents don't re don't really get the music, they don't understand it, they just like label it and brand it as like explicit noise, and that they don't understand what their kids are going through, or feeling what corn feel, which makes sense I guess. Um, he also goes on to say that in one of my verses I'm talking about being a kid that's always known as the t I don't know if I can say this because it's like a word that might get me you know in trouble he says I was a kid that's always known as the fucking town faggot it's funny how things change how some of these people who picked on me all of a sudden look who's laughing now because I'm a big rock star now ha 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 and then in another verse I talk about all of these parents fucking hating me for what I do saying I'm uh, corrupting their children but in turn these parents need to step outside of themselves and really listen to what I'm talking about uh, then I think they can understand that they were kids before they're just really quick to judge me kinda sad kinda true next so next song BBK so there are a lot of words that I will be saying 
um, I'm gonna I'm gonna test this. So basically, um, if this video gets flagged or whatever, I will use that information for like my next video. So I'm just gonna be as open as I can. So BBK actually stands for Bye Bye Kids. However, a lot of people, myself included, always assumed this song stood for Big Black Cock. Uh, JD says Big Black Cock. That's what I call a Jack and Coke. <laughs> Fair enough. But the song itself is about uh, his alcoholic tendencies because of all the pressures he finds himself drinking more and more kinda sad um, and then he he says quote unquote I'm trying to kill myself you know but do I really want to kill myself things I'm just questioning most of this is self-structured fair enough okay next song is pretty uh, th this is really fucked up so if you know how fucked up daddy is which you probably do in my opinion pretty is more fucked up you can imagine so I'm gonna pause a minute Okay, so JD used to work in a morgue when he was 17 and a half, and um, one day he sees this corpse, and it's an 11 year old baby girl, and quote unquote, her legs were broken back behind her, and her dad had raped her like a toy doll and chucked her in the bathroom. It was the most heinous thing I'd ever seen in my life. I still have nightmares about it. Uh, and then he goes on to say, I was 17 and a half. It was heavy. I went through all of all kinds of therapy and I found out I have PTSD from seeing all those bodies. When you see someone dead, it traumatizes your brain. You don't know what to do with all of this shit. It's like one of the reasons I'm so fucked in the head because I was so young and my brain couldn't store the stuff. So yeah, in my opinion, the concept of that song and like the where it comes from, that's like that's fucked up, man. Okay, next something more light-hearted, all in the family. So um, that is the song with Fred Durst. JD, JD actually hates this song. He, he says, uh, <laughs> all, in the all in the family is the worst corn song ever recorded. It's, it's horrible. We were all drunk in the studio and I was trying to rap. At the time, we were having a good time, but, um, but now it, I just cringe. I've got nothing against Fred. It just sucks. We were out of our minds drunk. It shouldn't have made the record. That's, that's, that's funny. Uh, it was originally intended for Be Real of Cypress Hill. It didn't work out as Be Real's record label wouldn't let him do it. What else did he say? He also said that uh, JD himself came up with some of the lyrics for Fred when Fred rips on JD. Pretty cool. Uh, so that is all in the family. Next we have Reclaim My Place. So, okay, this one's quite interesting as well. So once again, more words that could get me in trouble, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test them out. So when JD was at school, he was um, into wearing makeup and he listened to new wave bands and he got like ripped on and teased a lot. And basically people called him a faggot a hell of a lot. And uh, the song is kind of about how that was his like, you know, childhood. But now, now that he's in the band, even his band members are calling him a faggot and like ripping on him. Um... And and he says, quote unquote, I'm talking about being a kid that's always known as the fucking town faggot. And this one is about the whole band and how all my life I've been called a homosexual. Even now, I've become this big rock star in a band. And I'm still called a fag, even by my, my own band. So I was like fucking pissed off at them. It's like erase them all because I'm going to reclaim my place and say, hey, they owe a lot to me. And I owe a lot back to them, but it still kind of sucks. I, I've never really gotten away from the f fag fucking title. Just because I'm a sensitive kind of guy, it really sucks. So, interesting to know. Uh, the next song is Justin. So this one's, this is really unexpected. So Justin is about um, a kid called Justin who had like fatal cancer. Uh, what, what was the cancer? Can't find the quotes. Anyway, um, his last wish was to hear Korn's next album, which would have been followed the leader before he died. Um, so the song is like a tribute to Justin. There's a picture that I will include shortly. Uh, he also says the first 12 tracks on the CD have a five second moment of silence each, which adds up to a minute of silence for Justin. JD says it really freaked me out. It's, it's really intense, someone's going to die and his last thing he wants to do is come, ha come hang out with us. So I truly, just, it, I truly just freaked out. It's like, why would you want to meet me? What makes me so special? 
Next song is Seed. So this is about JD's son. Uh, what is his name? JD Nathan. It says JD is uh, reflecting on the innocent ex existence of his son Nathan in comparison to his own stress-filled life. So basically JD says every time he looks into his son's eyes he, he sees himself how he used to be innocent and stress-free and he's kind of jealous. It really sucks. He used to be that way. It's like he has to work so hard at this thing in his life. He has to become a stressed out freak. After he has to put food on the table for his child and every time he looks in his eyes he sees himself staring back at him. Every time he looks in his eyes he sees himself staring right back at him laughing it's like he was carefree and innocent as a child, and he's kind of jealous of it because now that little fucker, quote unquote, has my exact same eyes. I'm looking at myself when I look at him. It's sad. It's sad. Next we have Camortosis featuring Trey Hardson. Uh, so JD says that he has been scared by a previous relationship, and the song is kind of about women in general, women who hurt me. JD's quotes. Uh, it's Trey's lyrics, he's just going on, on about chicks and my chorus is like I'm so scared to love anymore and really let them in after I got hurt really bad before. So he also he also goes on to say that the word camotosis is a joke, you know, camel toes, so on. Um, yeah, so it's about girls that hurt you basically, fair enough. My Gift to You, that is actually about, um, it's, it's, it's like a love song to JD's fiance at the time. Renee. So him and Renee had a very like uh, dark relationship. Like she would leave him like letters on his bed about all the ways she would like kill him. Yeah, he says she used to leave notes on my pillow like 25 ways she would kill me. Uh, she's got like a weird death fetish. Fair enough. And the song itself is kind of like a love song that he wrote to her. But rather than a love song, it's about killing her. And like he talks about how in the lyrics he he says I've always had a fantasy of fucking her and choking her to death. I fantasize about what it would look like uh, me in her body and watching me do it. Uh, so like a really sick fucked up song, but I, I did it totally. Like I, I love her so much. But yeah, so that's what it is a love song, a love song to his then fiance and lastly we have irritate my ear that's actually a cheech and chong cover so that's apparently it's about a teenage boy fantasizing about becoming a world famous rock star becoming very very wealthy and not having to listen to authority uh, including being disowned by his family for wearing his sister's pantyhose that's basically it